I didn't record that, right? <laughs> Excellent question. Um, I think one of the things that was instilled in me uh, since my undergrad days in Harvard, uh, being with gentlemen like Enoch and Ty, Mike Bill, and others, Colustin, um, is the responsibility that we have um, as Harvard black men. That's um, right. Despite, regardless of um, our upbringings, uh, we are now privileged. And, and with pri privilege comes a, a deep re responsibility to expand the notion of what it means to be a black man, and a black man in America, and a black man in this world. Um, so personally, I, 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 it was intentional um, in my choice to be able to, to join the Heart Children and be a part of this work um, is to say that there are careers that you can build uh, within the education space. I'm not a pedagogue, right? My background's in banking, uh, I'm not a teacher, um, but I have a skill set that I think will be able to drive um, this work forward in the same way as anybody, man, female, black, white, um, in this room. And, and I think the more that we um, serve as examples of career paths that you can have um, within the field of social service or education or healthcare or what have you, whatever social ill that may be a passion of yours, um, the more that you will be able to attract uh, similar talent. And I think that's, a, that's an important uh, way to be able to bring uh, more people of color generally um, within the education space. Yeah, and, and another thing also, I think that uh, really the onus is on all of us black men, right? We need to get involved, we need to mentor, uh, we need to lead and uh, just be, be present. And I know, I know it's tough, it sucks. Uh, none of us have time, I mean, I'm strapped. But um, at the same time, you know, even even you know, during the startup hustle, we actually, uh, Jason and I and a couple other uh, blacks in tech, we actually started up a uh, nonprofit where we teach black males how to code. It's a it's a mentoring and training program. So teaching them like obviously a hard hard skill, uh, but we teach them the soft skills too, right? And it's important. And it's significant. Uh, it's called the Hidden Genius Project. It, it project is significant because uh, black males are mentoring these inner city, you know, uh, socio, uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged black males, teaching them problem solving, math, uh, coding, and, and just sort of how to, how to take a, an idea from the initial conception stage to, um, you know, to actually a, a full blown product that they develop on their own. So, uh, but my, my biggest thing though, it always has been, and I know uh, Kwame was really big on this and, and a, a number of others, uh, Enoch, Mike, and, and a number of others in here uh, were really big on mentoring as well. And I think we, we all have to do it. Um, I just want to mention one of my favorite essays from one of our graduates this past year, um, who had lost his brother to gun violence um, and so he's kind of describing the situation and he comes to a moment in the essay where he has to ask the question, what is a man? I don't know. I don't have any examples of this in my family. I haven't seen what it looks like. Um, and so as I talk more, I work very closely with our students who are males and females. Um, and so a lot of the guys, it's something that they want. Like I need, I need a role model and like it's so great to know you, but I don't know what this looks like for me as a man. What role am I supposed to be playing in my family? I don't have a father, my mother expects me to do all these man of the house things, I'm 18, I'm trying to go to college. You know, like I need someone to show me how to do it. Um, and so for us, I mean we don't have kind of a big scale mentoring program or some of the smaller interventions we've seen is being able to get voices from slightly older males who are doing what we would expect our younger males to do those voices into the classrooms or in kind of into their hearing. Um, so one kind of very simple intervention that we've seen in the literature and that we've replicated at our school um, is getting testimony from God. We have one student um, who went on before everyone else. And we know that in terms of college persistence, mindset plays a big part in that. Um, kind of in two ways, one has to do with social belonging. Do I belong here? Are there people like me here? Is this what I should be doing? The other has to do with academics. Like, can I, can I actually handle it? Can I do it the moment I face the challenge? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, so we primed this student and asked him, when you didn't feel like you belonged on campus, what did you do to feel like you belong? Those sorts of questions. Um, so we've recorded those from students who look like the students that we have, they know this student, and then we bring those back, show them to the students, and then we do um, kind of further, further um, 
activities with them to kind of think about what it means and how would you advise someone like you. So being able to have a role model who's doing, who's been where you're trying to go, who you can relate to, um, kind of makes it easier. You need, I mean, it's role modeling, which we all know of, but I'm just hearing it from the mouths of the students is something that's really powerful for them. Yeah, and the one thing, so in walking through Harlem Children's Zone with Kwame uh, a few times, one of the things that's actually really striking is the number of black males that are there teaching classrooms. My schools do not look like that. I want to get them to look like that. So the onus is on the, the me's and the Kwame's of the world to like actually on our human capital shops place a significant emphasis on hiring diverse folks with diverse experiences who look like our kids. And I'm wondering, Pamela, in closing, like, what is the Graduate School of Education doing to churn out more of those folks? We're looking for more people to apply. I think that, I think that part of it, we, we do need black males. Um, down in South Carolina, uh, colleagues of mine have a program called Call Me Mister. And it's about recruiting um, black males um, at Clemson and um, University of South Carolina to go into education. We need to make it an honorable and honored profession. Meaning we don't say I'm just a teacher and we pay people accordingly. Excuse me, Jay-Z has a second grade teacher. <laughs> had a fifth grade teacher. What did he or she make compared to what they're making? Um, I think that we just have to think about our distribution of resources. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank the panelists. Tonight at the gala, go and harass them about any patients.